Hello, this is Dr. Raj Kumar. Oftentimes, the medical transcriptionists might have heard the doctor dictating as follows. The diagnoses on this patient include number one, hypothyroidism. Now, what did you hear? Did you hear hypo HYPO thyroidism or did you hear hyper HYPER thyroidism? Often the medical transcriptionist is confused as to exactly what he or she is hearing. Today, we will discuss some clues which the transcriptionist can gather from the report he or she is processing so as to arrive at the right diagnosis. Hypothyroidism, also known as underactive thyroid, it's a condition in which your thyroid gland is not functioning normally or it is underperforming. Whereas hyperthyroidism, also known as overactive thyroid, is another condition in which your gland is functioning more than normal. The two main hormones produced by the thyroid gland associated with thyroidism are T3 and T4. T3 is triiodothyronine and T4 is tetraiodothyronine or thyroxine. When your gland is underfunctioning or underactive or you are hypothyroid, the levels of T3 and T4 go down. Whereas, when your gland is overactive, the T3 and T4 levels go up. This is the basic which you have to understand. There is another hormone, a third hormone secreted by the thyroid gland called calcitonin, which is not associated with thyroidism, whereas it's involved with calcium metabolism where it mobilizes the blood calcium and puts it into the bones. That is when you are hypercalcemic or your blood levels of calcium are high, it takes away the calcium from the blood to the bones, the opposite function of the parathyroid hormone. Now before we uh, go into the details, <coughs> I would suggest that uh, every medical transcriptionist understand the basic anatomy and physiology of the thyroid system. So from a medical transcriptionist perspective, when we look at the thyroid system, the thyroid system is as follows. Uh, you have the hypothalamus in the brain, which secretes a hormone called the thyrotropin releasing hormone, which acts on the anterior pituitary, the pituitary gland, and it stimulates the production of TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone. As the name indicates, the thyroid stimulating hormone is a stimulation for the thyroid gland, which is a butterfly shaped gland located in your neck, and it makes the thyroid gland produce more of T3 and T4. So you have to understand that the hormones produced by the thyroid gland are T3 and T4, whereas TSH is produced by the anterior pituitary to stimulate the thyroid gland. The basic functions of thyroid gland, uh, I mean the basic functions of T3 and T4 are increasing your metabolism, your growth and development and also the catecholamine effect. Catecholamine effect means uh, preparing your body for some physical activity. This is increasing your heart rate, your blood glucose and preparing yourself for a physical, uh, an adrenaline effect. Now, when the T3 and T4 levels go up, they give a negative feedback on your brain, that is your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland, stating that T3 and T4 levels are high, so you need not produce more of thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, consider hypothyroidism, where your gland is under functioning or it is not functioning properly. So you can expect the T3 and T4 levels to go down because the gland is not functioning properly. When your gland is not functioning properly and the T3 and T4 levels are low, it gives a feedback on your brain stating that these levels are low. So, more of TSH is produced to stimulate your gland. So, this is how it works. In hypothyroidism, you have low T3 and T4 and you have high TSH. On the contrary, when you are hyper or hyperthyroid and your gland is functioning more than normal and producing more and more of T3 and T4. So the levels go up. It gives a negative feedback on your brain stating that T3 and T4 levels are excessive. So don't produce TSH and the TSH level goes down. So this is the basic principle everybody got to understand regarding the hormones associated with the thyroid system. <coughs> now a brief look at the hormones 
uh, associated with the thyroid system. <coughs> they are the TRH or the thyrotropin releasing hormone secreted by your hypothalamus which acts on your pituitary gland and stimulates the production of TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates your thyroid gland and produces T3, triiodothyronine and T4, tetraiodothyronine or thyroxine. Now, whenever a transcriptionist hears thyroidism, either hyper or hypo, the first area which he or she has to look in a report is the lab values. You look at the laboratory values. So as discussed, when your gland is hypofunctioning, thyroid gland is hypo, you need more stimulation. So TSH goes high or the thyroid stimulating hormone goes high. And since your gland is under functioning, the hormones produced by the gland, they go low. On the contrary, when you are hyper, your gland is functioning more than normal, you don't need stimulation. So TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone will be low and naturally you are hyper, the gland is hyper and it produces more of the hormones T3 and T4. So this is the relation everybody got to understand. It is very easy to remember the TSH level. It is 0.4 to 4.0. You can take it this way for remembering it. So whenever the TSH value is low, say your value is 0.13. You have a low TSH, so it has to be hyper. And when you have a high value of say 5.1, it's more than the upper limit, so naturally you have to be hyper. So if you understand this relation, 60 to 70 percent or sometimes even more, you can always arrive at the right diagnosis in each and every file. Suppose you don't have the lab values described by the doctor, so which is the area you look for next? The next area you look for is the medications. Hypothyroidism or under-functioning thyroid, it's not producing T3 and T4. So you have to give hormone supplementation. So levothyroxine is the supplementation given. Levothyroxine is a drug available in different brand names. Levothyroid, Unithroid, Synthroid, Levoxyl, Eltroxin. All these are brand names of levothyroxine. Then you have liothyronine available as cytomel and triastat and you have the thyroid product available as armor thyroid, westroid and thyrolar. So any of these drugs you find in the medication list for the patient, the patient has to be hypothyroid. On the other hand, if your, you or if the patient is hyperthyroid or if his thyroid gland is functioning more than normal, producing more of T3 and T4, you need to stop the thyroid gland. So you give antithyroid drugs. The common antithyroid drugs are one, methimazole. So methimazole available as tapazole and domethimazole. Then you have propyl thiouracil, PTU. You have propranolol available as inopran, indroal, indroal LA, and another strong antithyroid agent is potassium iodide available as thyrosafe, thyroshield, losat, SSKI is saturated solution of potassium iodide in Pima. So any of your drugs, any of these drugs you find in the medication list for the patient, you can conclude that the patient is hyperthyroid. So after the lab values, it is always the medications. Suppose you have a rare situation. So if you have the lab values and the medications, which usually are provided by the speakers in uh, close to 90% of the cases, sometimes you don't have either of these, then what do you do? The next area you look for is the past medical history or the history of present illness, where the doctor might be dictating some disease conditions. You find Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it is always hypo. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disorder where your uh, the functioning of the uh, thyroid gland is below normal or the, there is thyroid destruction occurring as a result of the autoimmune process and the thyroid gland is not able to produce enough of T3 and T4 so naturally you have to give thyroid supplementation so when if you find Hashimoto's disease in the history of, for the patient he's always hypo and Graves disease is another uh, autoimmune disorder where antibodies are produced which simulate the TSH. The function of the TSH is to stimulate the thyroid gland. So when antibodies simulate TSH, they produce, they make the thyroid gland produce more and more of T3 and T4, resulting in a condition called thyrotoxicosis. So you have Graves' disease. He is always hyper. Now I would like to share an interesting information. One of my colleagues, after uh, understanding all this, called me up one day and said. Uh, doctor, uh, I had a report where the 
uh, doctor was dictating thyroidism and I typed hyperthyroidism because the patient had Graves disease described in the report but uh, the file was picked for auditing and I was marked with a critical error. So how did this happen? So I naturally asked the patient, uh, asked the uh, colleague as to what exactly he was hearing. He said I was hearing something close to hypo, HYPO thyroidism. But since Graves disease was described in the report, I settled with hyper. So here on further questioning, uh, from his recollection he told me that the patient was hyperthyroid and he had Graves disease and he was put on antithyroid drugs then the doctor could not control his hyperthyroidism so finally he was referred to a surgeon to get his thyroid out that means in this particular case the patient was hyperthyroid and he had Graves disease he was put on antithyroid drugs or methimazole and he the the doctor could not control his uh, hyperthyroid so he was referred to a surgeon to take out his thyroid gland or thyroidectomy so once your thyroid gland is taken out naturally you become hypothyroid you don't have your thyroid gland so here what the doctor was dictating was hypothyroidism that is HYPO hypothyroidism status post thyroidectomy so that is a condition where you have to uh, be logical you have to reason out you have to understand that the patient was hyper so that's a rare case where you have the patient will be hyper he will have Graves disease he will be on antithyroid drugs but finally when he has his thyroid remote he becomes hypothyroid so these are the three important areas where you look for in a report and suppose you don't have the lab values or you don't have the uh, medications listed or you don't have the disease condition. So there is another area which is not very confirmatory but still it can serve as supporting evidence for you to understand whether a patient is hyper or hyper. See as I described earlier the functions of T3 and T4 are catecholamine effect, uh, growth and development and increasing the metabolism. So when T3 and T4 decreases as in case of hypothyroidism, you have all these sluggish activities in your body. You become sluggish, you have weight gain, whereas here it increases, you have weight loss. The metabolism slows down, you have slow speech, slow movement, slow memory, everything slows down. Here the increased metabolic rate, palpitations, nervousness, your bowels slow down, you have constipation, your bowels speed up, you have diarrhea slow heart rate and tiredness, rapid heart rate and nervousness. And another peculiar thing, you have a cold intolerance in hypo. You cannot tolerate cold, always wrapped up, whereas you have heat intolerance in hyper, heavy menses for women, scan menses in hyperthyroidism, you have dry skin and brittle nails, whereas on the contrary in hyper, you have moist skin and soft nails. And infertility is present in both. So if you are infertile or you are unable to bear children, always get your thyroid checked. And if you find some abnormality in your thyroid hormones, get it corrected so that you can become fertile again. So these are the main points which everybody got to remember, the lab values, the medications, the disease conditions which the patient has and finally the symptoms which are demonstrated by the patient. So all these put together you can always arrive at the right diagnosis whether it is hyper or hypo. So thank you very much for your valuable time listening to me. This is Dr. Rajkumar. You can reach me here. Thanks again and bye-bye. Have a great day.